Michigan is rolling. Get a big win yesterday, 34 to three over Nebraska in football kind of weather. A little bit of cold, a little bit of crisp, a little bit of precipitation. Don't matter. Wolverines are rolling. Get a big win, like I said, in the Bustin' Bowl. And Jim Harbaugh talked about it in the post-game press conference. There's no stress. We're on a mission. We're on a happy mission. Said George Patton would be proud. We can go by air. We can go by land. We went by land today. And Michigan just continues to apply pressure to whoever they're playing. And when I watch Michigan play, the opposition, I would imagine, it feels a lot like standing under some sort of heavy weight. Like at first, you, you put it on your back and you're standing under it and you think, OK, maybe I can hold this up. I, I kind of got it. I mean, it was 17 to three at half. It's not insurmountable. It's two scores. OK, maybe I got this. They've only run for, you know, a certain amount of yards, but the longest rush of the day was 17. So we're not just getting, you know, totally throttled with 40 and 50 yard runs. And before you know it, the pressure continues to be applied. The defense does not allow you to breathe. I mean, they didn't allow more than 100 yards on either passing or rushing. 75 yards rushing allowed, 71 pass yards allowed. Just continue to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze like an anaconda before they take the life out of you. 264 rush yards, five yards of carry. Michigan just forced Nebraska yesterday to submit. J.D. Pacquiao, this is the hard count. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A lot of you Michigan faithful already have. Thank you so much. It's somewhere over 1,000, I believe, in the last week or so. But if you haven't, come join the party. We have a real good time. Also, follow me on the social channels at J.D. Pakel on Twitter and Instagram. Michigan now has outscored their last five opponents in the second half alone, 117 to three. Going back to that analogy of the weight on an opponent, they just lean and lean and lean and take the air out of you until you just submit. And especially in the second half is when we see them cause their victims to say uncle. Because that's what it feels like for Michigan, quite frankly, this last few weeks. They cause them to submit and wave the white flag. Here's the most impressive thing to me about Michigan. We talk a lot about bully ball. We compare them to that big kid on the playground. They're bigger than you. They're stronger than you. They impose their will on you. Well, that's not a secret. The game plan isn't a secret. They've been doing this over the course of the season. Blake Corum was asked about it. Hey, our team's doing different things to try and stop you. He said, oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. They're loading the box more on us. They're putting more guys up front to try and stop us. But he said, we just dominate. I got the best line in the country. They just dominate. The receiver's on the outside. We won on the perimeter. And I run hard, as I'm assuming sort of something else that was baked into that phrase. Michigan doesn't care what you're trying to do against them. It doesn't matter that you're trying to throw the kitchen sink at them. They are bigger, they are stronger, and they are asserting their dominance over you. And maybe you don't have a ton of that problems in the first half, but by the second half, you're begging for mercy. And it sounds kind of morbid and National Geographic-esque, but that's just the fact of the matter. That's how Michigan has handled their business to this point in the year. Now, throwing the football with J.J. McCarthy is something that's going to be talked about a lot going forward. Jim Harbaugh got asked about it yesterday. It was 8 for 17. Threw two touchdowns. He ran one, 129 yards. It was bad weather, so it's not like a great environment to get a feel for what J.J. McCarthy is going to be as a quarterback going forward. Deep passes didn't hit as frequently as you would like to, but here's what I would say on J.J. McCarthy to just kind of reset the entire frame on him. I am convinced that this entire regular season is a ramp up to Ohio State, meaning for J.J. McCarthy, this offense right now is being called to get him as comfortable and as confident as humanly possible before that game. Because I would imagine in that game, you would still like to run the same kind of game plan like you're trying to run Quorum. You hope Edwards is back at that point in time, which I maybe I'm going out on a limb here, but I would assume he is back for that game. Assumptions are dangerous, but I would imagine you have your full arsenal of talent available for that game. They're going to be able to try and pound the rock. I mean, you would imagine that's still the game plan. But when I go back to J.J. McCarthy, they want to have that counterpunch off of it. And when they get there, they want that counterpunch to be, again, as comfortable and as confident as possible. So the deep passes aren't connecting like you wanted to. Like I said, some precipitation, not perfect weather for throwing the football yesterday. 
But when it comes to deep passes, it's a lot like shooting the basketball, kind of that same shooter's mentality. Meaning as soon as the first one goes, that first one drops, you see it go in. Well, one, your confidence grows. So you start thinking, okay, this actually is how you do it. I got the muscle memory. I do know how to do this. And J.J. McCarthy, I promise you, knows how to throw a good deep ball. Second is that basket looks a lot wider. That zone to throw the ball into for your receiver looks a lot more doable, looks a lot more wide open. And when you get one, usually there's a couple more around, like a cockroach. You see one of them, there's probably four or five more. It comes in bunches. So what I'm saying is if you're a Michigan fan and you're worried about J.J. McCarthy and what you haven't gotten vertically just yet, I would say don't panic because the current game plan is still working just fine and all you need for that dam to break, in my opinion, on the deep pass is just one and I think you see a lot more of it come because you got a lot of receivers. I mean, Ronnie Bell is an absolute dog for you. Schoonmaker is a presence over the middle. They have all the ingredients. Just a matter of mixing it together perfectly one time, then you got the recipe, then you can execute effectively going forward. So the main thing remains the main thing for Michigan. If you want to knock their schedule, I don't know what to tell you. Palms up high school over here. I don't know what you want me to say. They play who they play. This team doesn't control that. They got Illinois, which probably didn't do them any favors losing yesterday. Would imagine that will no longer be a ranked opponent for Michigan. You got Ohio State who it has always been about since the beginning of the season, you knew this game would likely determine your college football playoff future. When that game gets here, you better believe we're going to break it all down and predict it. But the same thing is true as it was in August as it is today. It's all about Ohio State for Michigan. And I promise you, that's no secret for either side of that equation. But Michigan in the Bustin' Bowl wins 34-3, and causes yet another opponent to submit to their will. I'm Jody Pakel. This has been the Hard Count Nick Break doing the real heavy lifting. You can help drive the whole operation by subscribing to the channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at JD Pakel. We're going to keep the party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of the Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.